Welcome to Business Talk, where we don't just crunch the numbers, we interrogate them, we question their life choices, and we ask them what they really want to be when they grow up. I'm Michael Avery, and today we're strapping on our actuarial seatbelts and diving into the thrilling world of risk, retirement, and razor-sharp insights with Momentum's Head of Employee Benefits and Actuarial Consulting, Henri Prinsloo. Uh, now, I know what you're thinking, an actuary on a talk show, what's next? An exciting seminar and depreciating methods, but hang tight, because uh, Henri isn't just your typical actuarial robot. He and his team are on a mission to make actuarial advice relevant, human, and dare I say it, almost sexy. So if you've ever wondered how AI is changing the game, what pension funds will look like in the year 2035, if we can look beyond Trump, and whether actuaries dream of uh, electric sheep, then this one is certainly for you. Andre, great to have you on the show. Let's just kick off with the age-old perception issue that actuaries are often seen as the boffins in the back room. What are the biggest challenges you face in being viewed as trusted advisors rather than just the number crunches in the background? Uh, yeah, good morning, Michael, and thank you very much for having me. Uh, certainly, I think we've uh, got a reputation for liking to crunch the numbers in a dark room. Um, I don't think the words actuarial and sexy have ever been mentioned together in a sentence, so thank you, you must be the first. Um, yeah, I think certainly the challenge, you know, for anybody wanting to be a trusted advisor is effectively the element of trust, right? So to build trust with someone takes time, it takes uh, consistency, you know, demonstrating over and over again that you are to be trusted. And I think sometimes for actuaries, and particularly for those of us who are deeply introverted, um, you know, putting yourself out there and being able to demonstrate that trustworthiness um, can be a bit tricky beyond the very technical number crunching. So I think, you know, the main challenge really is to to demonstrate that true value where we're able to see a bigger picture beyond the numbers. I think our, our training and our, our experience often gives us a view that is much wider than just crunching numbers. And so being able to build those relationships beyond the numbers and the technicalities, I think, is really important for us and that remains the big challenge. Yeah, well, I still think in today's world, because we've got access to so much data at our fingertips and even more so in the world of AI, having a conversation that's grounded in the data I think is a key in building that bridge of trust. So I think the time of the actuary may just be the time of uh, AI and big data that we're living in. But Momentum, I know, as a group often talks about aligning with real world client needs. It sounds great. It sounds like one of those things you can put in a, in a pitch deck or in a PowerPoint presentation. But how do you give life to that in practice? Yeah, I think I think the key there, Michael, is really keeping your finger on the pulse and being able to respond to that. So, be, you know, beyond we, we use data every day, and I think as you've mentioned, the advent of AI and, and the ability to crunch, you know, monstrous amounts of data, you know, gives you a big opportunity, but also pre presents a challenge to be able to take the data and not get too stuck in, you know, the technicalities. But what does it all actually mean in the real world? And I think within momentum, you know, we've seen certainly a lot of our actuaries, but but also a lot of our other professionals being able to get involved in areas where they're able to use their skills. And and as actuaries, we are quite well suited. We've been doing you know sort of data analytics type work, you know, since since the start of our profession. Um, you know, we now have much fancier tools to do that, but it's ultimately the same sort of stuff. And I think you know, for example, we've got a data insights and analytics team, and um, their entire job is to understand what's coming through from the data from our clients and what real world problems are being presented by the data and how best we can solve those. We, we attach to that then what we call client immersions. So this isn't directly an actuarial um, function, but it's a, a team of people within Momentum that go into our clients, individual clients and corporate clients. They sit with them and, and really try and understand these real world problems and, and including times when we may not have got it right. So, you know, we're not perfect and uh, we try to be, but, you know, we do drop the ball sometimes. And sometimes just hearing from your clients, you know, where they may have expected something else from you beyond numbers and beyond spreadsheets and reports um, is really important to find that real world application for the stuff that you're doing. So I think that's really, really important for us. Yeah, it's, and it sounds like very much, you know, one of those concepts that was taken from big tech and, and the likes of Amazon and Apple and also starting with that end product or end client need or problem or pain point in mind and then working back from there rather than saying, right, I've got this tool, I've got this solution and I'm going to impose it on what I think your problem is. And I, and I think that really is uh, refreshing to hear, especially in today's volatile world, because obviously we've got Trump and who knows what he's going to do next. Uh, the fears of stagflation as a result, all of this geopolitical chaos. How can good actuarial input genuinely improve corporate decision making, especially when it comes to pension funds and mitigating all of this risk? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Michael. And I think we, we live in incredibly volatile times. I mean, we've seen over the last five years, you know, global pandemics, presidents come and go, uh, political issues across the globe. 
And I think, you know, from an actuarial point of view, I think we've always seen ourselves as a safe pair of hands. Um, so we were able to sort of adapt to various different conditions and, and not try to get not too sucked into the noise. Because I think at the end of the day, if you're applying sort of solid principles, using the new technologies, using new ways of thinking to, to attack new problems, um, I think you're in a, in a good space. Uh, I think, you know, certainly from my point of view, uh, when you're looking at things like pension funds, employee benefits and risk management, you know, actuaries can add a lot of value in much wider spaces than just those very technical reports or the number crunching only. I think we do have the ability to see how people experience things. Um, and so improving things like customer experience or employee experience is something which, you know, you can really use a lot of the data techniques to understand what makes people tick within your organization or in your client base and try to reach that sort of, you know, the panacea of the Amazons and the Apples who seem to have this knack for knowing exactly what people need before they know um, and being able to deliver on that. And I think, you know, using our expertise and our our skills combined with new technologies gives us the opportunity to sit with employers about issues that are much wider than just their pension funds or employee benefits and, and really show them that we can demonstrate, uh, you know, add demonstrable value within their business. You know, we see this within Momentum. We've got actuaries throughout our business, um, you know, or people with actuarial backgrounds, at least from, you know, ranging from the board um, you know, into the finance teams, uh, into all the various risk teams, product teams, uh, as I've mentioned, the data analytics teams, uh, you know, we've got pension fund actuaries, we've got you know, life actuaries, GI actuaries all over the show. So I think, you know, we've, we've been able to demonstrate that value across the wider sort of spectrums rather than in the pure, pure technical stuff. And I think that's where, that's where the magic starts yeah. happening. Absolutely. And it reminds me of the, the deep seek shock that the markets experienced recently, where it came in and kind of um, pulled the rug out of the assumption that uh, the existing incumbents like OpenAI and others had this huge advantage. And the CEO of deep seek of this, you know, this, this quant hedge fund in China, when he was asked about how they managed to do it, he came back with something that I think was really insightful. And he said, you know, our moat today is not so much technology, but it is it's people. And the fact that we've managed to attract some of the brightest scientists who didn't feel comfortable working in the US anymore now working back in China. And he says, that is going to be your key moat going forward. It's your culture. It's your people. And so for me, the key lesson for any CEO is to understand how do we make things better for our people to have the best people and employee benefits speaks to that beyond just whether or not you're going to be retiring with enough at the end of the day. And, and that's where I think there's a real big shift and lots of value that can be added. But, you know, to the point on tech, it is reshaping every profession. So what kind of role, and I, I'm really fascinated to hear how AI is shifting different professions, but how are you using AI and things like predictive analytics in the actuarial toolkit? Uh, yeah, Michael. So I think there's a huge amount of work going on in the actuarial profession, not only in South Africa, but across the across the world to understand how we can better use a lot of these tools. So there are a lot of functions where AI is already being used, um, a lot of things like pricing, reserving, um, even communication. So, you know, the, the use cases are very widespread. I think the challenge, as always, is to understand, you know, when when and where which tool is, is best suited. You know, sometimes sometimes an old spread, it is better than trying to apply a new fancy AI just for the sake of it. Um, but I think for me, the, one of the you know, one of the biggest advantages of, of the, the advancement of technology is the ability to connect to people and breaking down the barriers of knowledge. So as a knowledge profession, I think just like any other, like the lawyers and the accountants, you know, historically our, our advantage would have been that we have the knowledge. You know, I think now knowledge is so widely available. Anybody can pick up, um, you know, their software device, you know, their, their phone and, and ask ChatGPT, you know, how does this actuarial stuff work and make sense of it. And, and I think for us, it's how you use those tools to make things more accessible to people and particularly then to provide an experience for your customer or for your, or, you know, for your clients uh, or for your employees, for that matter, to, to really be able to use those things and feel connected. Um, because I think that's where the true power of the technology lies. It's, as you mentioned, it's all about people and people crave connection and, and being able to use that technology to connect people um, and deliver products and solutions and, and advice that really connects with them is, I think, the, you know, the next phase of this whole, this whole profession. Yeah, no, we're all we're all grappling with this new world and uh, wondering whether or not the robots are coming for our jobs. If you were to look ahead five to ten years, it's a very fraught exercise in a world that just seems to be moving so quickly. What's going to fundamentally change in the actuarial consulting space? Yeah, I think as actuaries, our job is to predict into the future, and I think that's become more and more difficult. Um, you know, at the end of the speed that things are changing. But I think for me, if I have to look ahead, I think certainly. From an actuarial consulting profession, uh, I think a lot of professions, there's a lot of blurring of the lines. So, you know, the difference between an actuary and an accountant and a consultant and a lawyer, sort of there's a lot of blurring around. A lot of these items start overlapping a lot. 
And I think certainly for me, for the profession, one of the biggest changes will be how we, how we use the technology, things like AI, things like machine learning, how we're able to use it responsibly. So I think we need to be very careful what we use things for and how we use them and make sure that we understand what they're doing. Working together with a lot of other professionals, including you know, this whole new wave of IT professionals or, or sort of developers that some of them you know, don't even exist yet, that we know those roles will be in the future to manage a lot of these, these massive models and this, these massive amounts of data that are flying around. So I think it's definitely going to be, you know, the, the successful consulting actuaries of the future will, will definitely be using tools and technologies to do a lot of what they have been doing, but also venturing into areas that are, you know, currently probably the purvey of other people. Um, and I think that's certainly the challenge to manage all of that responsibly. Um, but then, you know, not being stuck in your ways. So remaining at the forefront, I think is, you know, similar to a lot of the other professions, certainly uh, yeah, of the future. So I think the, the future actuary won't necessarily be replaced by AI. But the actuary who uses AI will probably replace that one who doesn't, um, I think is the, is the saying we've seen around a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great uh, analogy that because I, I think the one thing AI is doing is it's, um, it's democratizing access to fields where previously, if you wanted to code, you'd have to have some background in coding and even no code solutions were tricky and technical. Now with AI, I mean, you don't really even need that much understanding of how coding works. And you can almost become a coder if you're an actuary, if you're an accountant, if you're a journalist like myself wanting to trawl through huge data dumps, for example, and WikiLeaks. And you can actually go and use these tools. But I want to come back on the one thing that has been a golden thread through chatting on, Ray, and that is what sets Momentum Consulting actuaries apart is this personal kind of high-touch approach. In an industry full of corporate silos and kind of submit your ticket here service, what does that more personal experience actually look like on the ground? Yeah, so Michael, I think, you know, momentum has grown you know, so significantly, um, you know, since our, our humble beginnings in the 60s. Um, you know, we're now over 16,000 people. And with that comes some corporatization. You can't, you know, you can't really shy away from it. There's no other way really to organize people of that magnitude without having some red tape, some structures. But I think, you know, when you walk into any of the momentum buildings, and this is something I've experienced, it's just, there's something in the air. And uh, we talk about culture and, you know, people define culture in many, many different ways. Sort of the way we do things, the way things are seen or viewed or done. Um, but I think if you look at momentum, uh, and particularly over the last sort of 10, 15 years, there's definitely been this element of humanness where um, it, it spans everything. And, and I think, you know, when I think of that humanness, one of the things it is, is we've definitely made some mistakes. I mean, there have been some pretty high profile things in, in the media, you know, over the last few years where momentum has been involved, you know, providing services to so many people that, you know, to be expected that you might drop the ball here or there. But I think what I found is that, you know, to, to err is human and, you know, the, the response to those, those errors is certainly the way that I, I like to show up and to go, you know, maybe we got this one wrong. This is what we're doing to fix it. And when you've got something wrong, to really sit and listen to how, how that's impacted people. You know, and I think often, oftentimes our clients, and, and when we think of corporate clients, we think of, you know, boards of trustees and boards of companies. But at the end of the day, our ultimate client is really either a member of our pension funds or, a, you know, somebody who uses our insurance products. And for the most part, when they're interacting with us directly, they're in, in a difficult situation. So they're facing a, you know, potentially life-changing event like a trauma. Um, retirement is, you know, in itself, not, you know, not always a bed of roses. It can be a very difficult time for people. And so keeping that humanness across the business, I think, is something that um, we've managed to achieve to a large part. And uh, where we haven't, I think we've definitely been able to, to sit down and, and say, how did we get this wrong and how do we fix it going forward? So there's a, there's a huge humanness element here, which, which I certainly haven't seen at too many big corporates across, across South Africa and the continent where I've worked. And um, yeah, it's definitely in the way we do things, but it's sort of woven into the buildings almost. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting one. We could probably spend hours discussing you know, how that all works and you know, what it actually I was going to say, ideally suited to the model that we're shifting into in, in the retirement world of the two-pot system, which means it's a much more personal conversation. Every year, members of funds are going to have to make a decision um, whether or not to touch their savings pot or, 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 or not. And I think that just opens up uh, a much better two-way line of communication with those and, um, you know, members of pension funds, that's where the fiduciary responsibility rests at the end of the day. And that's hopefully how we can start shifting the needle, because, you know, for too long, that uh, that um, Forbes survey number of 6% retiring with enough has been stuck at 6%. So I'm really hoping that this new model, this new way of doing things can help shift that needle so that more South Africans can retire with enough. Uh, well, that's it. If you thought actuaries were just spreadsheet slinging hermits, hopefully today's chat with Andre has updated your assumptions and your models 
from AI to empathy, it's clear that the actuarial world is evolving quickly and those who stay human in the age of machines might just be the most valuable advisors of all. That's it uh, from Business Talk for today. Until next time, I'm Michael Avery, as always, and um, maybe imploring you to next time you see your actuary buy them that extra cup of coffee. Take care. <laughs> 